What's up, Snow Tracks viewers? Luke here, bringing you guys another walk around video. This time it is of the 2024 Catalyst based Arctic Cat Riot. Now, I want to just explain something quickly first. There is only one riot in the Catalyst, and it's this one. In the previous generation, there was two riots. You had the Riot, which had a full width front end and the slide action 146 rear end. And then you had a Riot X that had a narrow front end and uh, the Alpha 1 skid frame. This only comes as one package and it's kind of a com combination of both. It has the 146 slide action rear end, but it has a narrower, so I believe it's a 38 to 40 inch adjustable front end, um, more like the Riot X. So it, it's just called the Riot, but it is kind of a mix of the two. Um, just to be perfectly honest right off the bat, that's unfortunate to me. If this sled had to come with a full width front end, trail front end and been more like the base riot from last year um, it would have been well there would have been almost nothing bad to say about it now it's not that it handles bad it's just it's not as good as it could be and uh, that's again to me that's a shame but it doesn't take away from the fact that this is an awesome snowmobile and there is so much cool new stuff going on with this thing that we definitely need to talk about so let's just start uh, we'll we'll start by talking about the motor by now all of you already know that the catalyst is a 600 for this season for 2024 if you want a catalyst you get a 600. It's a reworked 600. It has an 800 crank. It has all kinds of new um, uh, EFI mapping uh, and all that stuff, tuning done to it. Um, so it is a little bit snappier, more powerful. It actually does produce more horsepower, though Articat won't say how much. Um, but it's a great motor. And as a 600, it's it's a very, very impressive 600. There's no, there's no excuses to be made in that class, that's for sure. Will it satisfy an 800 guy or an 850 guy? I don't know, it depends on how much you want to ride a catalyst, so that's up to you to decide, but I can say as a 600, you won't be disappointed. Moving around the sled, as I said, it has uh, kind of a mixture, as the Riot X did, of a trail spindle with more mountain style arms on the front. Um, so it's narrower and it doesn't ride quite as good, doesn't handle quite as good as the full, um, like a ZR based catalyst, but it's still really good and, uh, and I, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> um, the spindles are trail spindles though. And, and I've said this in my other walk around, these are some cool looking spindles, man. Everybody who sees this sled, the first thing they say is, wow, those spindles look awesome. Cause they do. This sled also has um, IQS, uh, so electric suspension, which is really, really neat. Um, it makes a lot of sense on the Riot because the front end is a little stiffer uh, due to the mountain arms and stuff. So you can soften it up and make it ride good while you're going out to your spot to play off trail and you can stiffen it up while you're off trail or whatever works for you, whatever you like. Um, let's move on back. So the Catalyst platform is very, very new. Um, there are some carryover parts, very few. The chassis is completely different than previous generations and that goes for the ride as well. This is a one-piece tunnel. Um, your running board mounts along this metal bracket right here. So the space between this edge of the running board and the tunnel, that space right there, that is a bracket. That is not part of the folded tunnel. It's separate from the tunnel. It is riveted here. And then your running boards are riveted down into it. And that is what changes when you go from a mountain to a trail version or a riot. This space will be eliminated on the M series and the running board will be pushed right up against the tunnel to get you that narrow um, running board width that mountain guys really want. This bracket here though this piece this folded piece that supports the running board goes all the way back and is the same piece as what your rear suspension bolt goes through right here so this is all one bracket all the way along that simplifies things it's fewer parts it's also much stiffer um, and it allows them to just build one running board for all sleds which means there's no part numbers for one part numbers for the other if you do happen to hurt your running board at some point which is unlikely but if you do any running board will work. You don't have to worry. In my opinion, it also gives them the opportunity in the future to produce different color running boards, which would be pretty cool. Um, moving back, this, I, as I said again, this is the um, Slide Action 146 skid frame. This is a really good skid frame for a crossover sled. Uh, in the Riot, it works really well. It's, um, it rides good. It provides good handling characteristics. Um, it's very comfortable and it gets great traction. It works really good in the deep snow. So uh, I'm really glad to see that that was the, the skid frame they used in the Riot um, in the Catalyst platform. It's really good. Uh, this one has a 1.6 lug on it. Um, so that's sort of more the trail version of the the Riot, I guess you could say. Um, there are taller lugs if you want to go that way, but this one is the shorter lug um, because, you know, 
where we are based in Ontario, Canada, we're more trail riders with some off-trail, so that makes more sense. Now you're probably looking back here and wondering what these things are. This is Arctic Cat's new accessory attachment system. It is called the Attach system. Not too creative, but very functional and tells you exactly what it does. So basically, all of the sleds, all catalysts come with these brackets pre-installed. You don't have to buy them, they're already there. The only model that doesn't is the RXC with pull start. That's the only one that doesn't include these. Um, but they come with the, the little rubber flap to cover them up when you're not using them. And basically your accessories just kind of click in, it's super simple, and all accessories are keyed. So anytime you buy an accessory that locks into this attach system, it will have a built-in key and it comes with the keys, obviously. So it's lockable and that's one of the only companies in the industry that's doing that, making it lockable right from purchase. You don't have to buy anything extra and that's awesome. Um, so I guess we'll move a little bit forward. I talked about the running boards being composite. This is a very special fiber material. Um, it is extremely strong and durable, but it's also flexible and it has to be even when it's really cold uh, so that it's not brittle. And that's something that Arctic Cat spent a lot of time deciding coming up with the, the right formula, testing and coming up with this exact formula for the, the running boards. Also, the rear kickups here are the same material as are your uh, stirrups and foothold areas in there. It's all the same material, all super durable. Um, a couple things I really like about it. I like that it's easy to to build for Arctic Cat, it's one piece. It makes sense. Um, rationalizing pieces across their models is gonna help them lower pricing. Um, the other thing I like about it is when you have aluminum running boards, unless they're bare, unless they're bare aluminum, they will get scratched and they will, after a number of years, start to look like crap. It's just the nature of the beast. You know, paint chips off when you run your boots over it day in and day out. This never will. Um, this will always look just like this. If in the off chance you put 2 million miles on your Arctic Cat and you start to wear down the grip on here, you can just replace the running board. It's, it's, it's really a smart idea. I love that they've done this. It makes perfect sense and uh, it's a great idea. So kudos to Arctic Cat for that. Now we're gonna move on to here. You've got your seat. This is the same seat as what's on the trail models. It's extremely comfortable. It's very firm. We complained in the past a ton about how squishy Arctic Cat seats were and how when you sat on an Arctic Cat, your knees were actually higher than your hips. And now, obviously I can't speak for everybody when it comes to ergonomics. I can only speak for myself and what's comfortable for me. I'm 6'1", uh, and I much prefer my knees to be below my hips. That's the comfortable, most comfortable riding position for me. And this vehicle gives me that riding position that I wanted. I find this to be head and shoulders above the previous generation of Arctic Cat sleds. This ergonomic package is excellent. You reach forward, all of the stuff is right where you want it to be. It's right here. Um, now they haven't updated their switch gear. It's the same switch gear, um, but you know what? This switch gear works great. Everything is right where you think it should be. I mean, your high-low beam switch, your hot grips, you know, your gauge button here for adjusting your gauge, your start, stop, and reverse button. It's all where you think it should be, and it all works. Um, I also want to give them kudos because they're one of the only companies left in the industry that wh whose switch gear still has a rocker for the hot grips and the thumb warmers that they're separate and you can go up and down with the same button. I don't know why we're moving away from that, but it's the way it should be. Now, when I did my walk around of the RXC and the intro story for the Catalyst, we got a ton of questions about the gauge and I'm gonna answer that question right now. There is a new gauge coming. It's not available yet. Um, it'll be a 2025 product. Uh, for right now, this is the gauge you get, the dual screen gauge. This sled, as I said, has uh, IQS suspension, so electric suspension. You get the dual screen gauge whenever you get IQS. And this gauge works really good. I mean, there are some people out there who want technology and all they care about is the highest technology. And then there's some people who just wanna go ride their snowmobile and don't wanna be distracted by too much technology. And the more I ride with big screens and fancy features, the more I kinda realize that I tend to ignore all that while I'm riding and I don't think about it until I stop. Now, of course, if you're looking at maps, stopping and looking at your map, that's a very useful feature. But when I'm actually riding my snowmobile, I don't need it. And this, when I tested this sled, never once became an issue for me that this gauge wasn't flashy enough for me. It has all the information I want and need. It's right there, it's easy to read, and it's durable, it doesn't fail. It, it's fine, it works good, I don't have any complaints. A new gauge will look cool and will be flashy and will satisfy a lot of people's you know, desires, but as far as I'm concerned, unless you gotta have it, this one works really well. Another cool thing Arctic Cat did, and I talked about this in my last walk around, I'll talk about it again, is they finally put a door on their little storage bin down here for your goggles or whatever else. So there's now a door on that, not a silly 
magnetic flap that snow can get through. I wouldn't put anything in here you want to keep dry, but in terms of it being a great storage spot for a spare pair of goggles or whatever, gloves, excellent. And it looks finished. It looks very nicely finished in there. Um, each Catalyst model gets um, a heated warmer or heated, uh, sorry, shield output right here, 12 volt outlet there. Um, your key is here on the, on the, I don't know what you call it, the center console. They come with a tether as well, mounted right front and center. And then the pull starter here is center mounted also. So this is what's right available to you in the middle. Um, they do know, they do not any longer start with the key. The key is simply an on off. That's all it does. Previous Arctic Cats, you could start them with the start button or you could start them with the key. This one is not like that. The key turns it on, the start button starts it. That's all there is to it. And of course your kill button kills it. Um, I wanna talk a little bit more about ergonomics here because this is an important part, this is an important thing to talk about. Uh, this is a very narrow snowmobile in the middle, right here, right between your legs. This is an extremely well-designed ergonomic package for aggressive riding. You can get yourself right off the side of this sled. It's easy to move around on. You sit on the wide portion of the seat, but when you want to get up on the tank, you're on the narrow portion, which allows for easier movement side to side. The side panels are extremely narrow very narrow. So you can get your knee out the side of them with no trouble. There's nothing to catch. This is a really, really comfortable snowmobile to ride hard. And it actually almost begs you to ride it hard. It really does. Um, and, and I just, again, give huge props to Arctic Cat for coming out with a new platform that meets the ergonomic requirements of their customer, of the person who's riding harder, a more upright seating position, more aggressive side panels for more aggressive riding. I just love it. You got your haze brake. Um, you know, this brake is the second best brake in the industry right now, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's ergonomics. I won't go too far into detail anymore about that because I've covered it off pretty well. Um, now let's talk a little bit about mechanics. So the nose of this vehicle, this part here, if you notice how fat it is right there, this distance right there. Now that's a style cue, but it's not just a style cue. This distance here is partially because this is your air box right in here, all in the, in the front of the hood. Um, you know, your air intake is up here, the air travels down here and then goes into the engine because the engine is actually mounted sort of backwards to what you would expect. The intake is on the bottom front of the motor and the exhaust comes off the top. Um, and you can see that when you look under the hood of this. Uh, but, you know, the way that that is laid out, it's not something that Articat has never done before. It's called the layback engine design. They've used it for years, but they've just sort of optimized it for this vehicle. The engine is an inch lower and an inch further back towards the bulkhead than the previous generations, which helps centralize mass. And as I said before, and I'm gonna keep saying it, you're gonna hear me say it in the test ride of this vehicle, centralizing the mass in this vehicle is what has made all the difference in how it handles and how you feel on the vehicle, how playful it feels, how snappy it feels. All of the weight has been shoved into the smallest possible space. So you are sitting in one area, the gas tank is basically directly underneath you and directly in front of you, and then the engine sits not too far in front of you either. It's all right in the envelope of your body space. So all of the heaviest components of the snowmobile are within a very small parcel of space. And it makes the sled feel super light because you, you don't really feel any weight behind you and you don't really feel any weight in front of you. It's all right where you are. It works so good and if I've ever seen centralized mass in action, making a difference, it's on this sled. I just absolutely can't say enough good about that. Um, now, these body panels, Articat spent a lot of time with these body panels, trying to get this right, make it easy to take the body panels on and off, um, make it easy to get to your engine to work on the sled. So there's just three quarter turns right here, and you literally just pop the panel up, it pops out down here, and it pops right off, that's it panel can come right off that easily. And in here is something I wanna talk about. Now, I know by now you already know this, but I'm gonna go over it anyway. You got a belt drive. Articat is the first one to ever do a belt drive on a trail sled from the factory. Now, maybe I can't say ever. I'll have to consult with Mark on that if it's ever been done before. But on a modern trail snowmobile, this is the first belt drive that we've seen. Articat claims up and down, swears up and down, this will last in, almost indefinitely, not indefinitely, but almost indefinitely. Their cross country racers have been testing it in the most aggressive uh, situations you can possibly get yourself into, and they've never had a belt failure. This is a different belt. This is something new that Articat has come up with. So it's not your traditional belt that we've seen on other sleds. This is something that's their own. It's simpler 
there's less moving parts, it's lighter, and believe it or not, it's actually quieter. And you do notice that when you're riding the sled, there's no chain noise, there's no chain tension or noise. It's a much quieter setup. And I actually really like that. It's kind of cool to be able to hear the sled better than you have in the past. Now you just got to point out the elephant in the room down here. Uh, to talk about exhaust systems and say that this is like a sculpted exhaust would not be correct. This is pretty much just an oval can, bam, placed in that space. But what I'd like to point out is how much extra space there is in here. There is a ton of extra space around this exhaust. There's all kinds of stuff you could do with that space, right? All kinds of room for more activities. Uh, anyway, I thought that was interesting. Now the hood comes off just as easily and I'm not actually gonna take it off right now um, only because I only have a limited amount of time, but the hood comes off with two Zeus fasteners. There's one here and there's one on the other side. Once you have both side panels off, there's simply a little lever down here. You twist and you just undo the Zeus fasteners, twist the lever and the whole hood pops right off and you unplug the one wiring harness and the whole sled is stripped for access to the spark plugs, anything you want. You know, your air box is now completely off the sled if you want to clean it or get in there or whatever you need to do. Super easy. If you do happen to have an incident with the sled and you bust something, the panels just come right off and you can get them fixed or, or replace the parts easily in your garage. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's really not a lot else to say about this sled. I mean, I love it. I, I've ridden the trail version. This version works really good. I'm not pumped about the narrow front end. Uh, as anyone who knows me or has heard anything I've said about crossover sleds, that's not really my bag. I prefer the full width trail front end. I would love to see Arctic Cat do a Riot and Riot X in this platform. I think that was a genius move on their part when they came out with two different crossover sleds. That made sense to me. Give everybody what they want, all for the sake of what? Just a front end. You know, make a Riot X with the, with the 146 um, Alpha 1 in the back and this front end on it. Do that. that. That would make perfect sense. Do it. I love it. And then give us back our trail front end. With that said, I'm not complaining to the point that this sled is, is suffering. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, so yeah, if you know me, you know what I'm saying. There's really not much else to say. I love the headlight. The headlight is super cool looking. It's, uh, it's got style built into it for the sake only of style which is pretty neat. So many times sleds are built to look a certain way and the looks are based on the design. I mean, it's form following function, which is great. And that makes sense if you want to build a sled that's very efficient and you just don't want to do any bells and whistles. Form can follow function. But in this case, Arctic Cat took form and went a little beyond function by using this cool looking headlight. It is aggressive. It actually works really good. We rode them at night and the, the, the light works excellent. But this little accent right here just adds a little character, I think. And, and it definitely lets you know when you're coming down the trail as if you couldn't already tell because this thing's wild looking that the guy coming at you is on a catalyst. There's no mistaking it with that little eyebrow thing winking up at you. Anyway, that is my, that is my walk around. That's all I got to say about this thing. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, um, please like our channel, subscribe so you get all of our videos, turn the bell on so you know when we post something new. That helps us out a lot. And of course, comment. We love to hear your comments. If you got questions about this sled, ask them. If there's things that you're unsure of or even critiques that you want to make, by all means, make them uh, and let us know. And, and, uh, and we really like hearing your feedback on that kind of stuff. So we're open to it. Now, of course, before I go, I have to start it or you guys won't be happy. So I'm going to end this walk around video by starting the sled and revving it up with the key on. Man, that's got a nice brap. See you guys next time.